30% of the protein in our body is collagen. With age, we start to produce less and it's lower in quality. One of the most visible signs of a reduction in collagen is seen in our skin, with wrinkles appearing and it's starting to sag. Collagen also helps protect our joints by maintaining the cartilage in them. As we age, this protection degrades and the risk of osteoarthritis goes up. But that's not all. It helps to keep our bones and arteries strong. Improving our ability to produce quality collagen slows down aging by keeping our skin, bones, and joints healthy. So it's essential to do everything we can to keep our collagen production functioning optimally over 50. Today we're going to look at how to do this through nutrition and supplementation. The most common way to supplement is through collagen peptides or hydrolyzed collagen. Two different terms, but they mean the same thing. Collagen protein that has been broken down into peptides which are short chains of amino acids linked by peptide bonds. When we take a collagen supplement, there's no guarantee that these amino acids will be reassembled in the body as collagen protein. What we do know is we're providing the body with the building blocks needed to make collagen, and they experimented with mice by injecting them with radioactive collagen peptides, finding that after intestinal absorption, these peptides are preferentially used in cartilage and bone. The results of animal studies don't always translate to humans, but this could be why supplementing with collagen peptides seems to be effective. When it comes to wrinkles, there's evidence that it can help, with one study showing improvement in skin hydration and elasticity after only 12 weeks. To see if supplementing reduced joint pain and symptoms of osteoporosis, I looked at a 2016 systematic review. The goal of this review was to look at all the current studies to see if hydrolyzed collagen had a therapeutic use on osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. It found that it did indeed play a positive role, potentially increasing bone mineral density, having a protective effect on joint cartilage, with its primary advantage being that it provided symptomatic relief of pain. Briefly, I want to talk about collagen protein and muscle growth. Some studies have shown it to aid in muscle growth, but it isn't the best choice if your main goal is to build muscle. It's an incomplete protein and low in branched chain amino acids, in particular leucine, which is a key amino in stimulating muscle protein synthesis. We can support our body's ability to make collagen by avoiding things that negatively affect its production and eating foods that provide the nutrition to encourage its ability to manufacture it. Dietary changes are the most important as supplementing without improving your nutrition is like trying to put out a forest fire with an eyedropper. Vitamin C is used to make collagen with citrus fruits like oranges being a great source. Berries, including strawberries and blueberries, are high in C2. Proline and glycine are two amino acids that make up collagen protein. Proline is found in eggs, dairy products like cottage cheese, and vegetables like cabbage, asparagus, and mushrooms. Glycine is found in large amounts in both pork and chicken skin, as well as most meats. For vegan sources, the list is shorter, with seaweed, watercress, and spinach being some of the best options. Copper also plays a role in collagen production. Beans, cashews, and organ meats make this list. Bone broth is a rich source of collagen, as is gelatin, which is basically cooked collagen. Again, once these are digested, there's no guarantee that the amino acids will be used to make new collagen in our body, and we don't have the testing on radioactive mice to help us draw a conclusion but it's a great way to ensure we have plenty of the nutrients the body needs to get the job done. We need to avoid having too much sugar and refined carbs in our diet as it interferes with our ability to repair collagen. Too much sun, smoking, and overconsuming alcohol are some more items that rank high on the list of things that damage our ability to produce collagen. Protein in general plays a critical role in ensuring we have enough amino acids available to build and repair the body. It's always best to get these from whole food sources but if you feel you just aren't getting enough, watch this video next to learn the good, the bad, and the ugly about supplementing with protein so we can keep working out, feeling youthful, and having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.